to Grappling with the Gray, a forum for promoting the development of an ethical mindset and ethical decision making to help us more clearly see both sides of complex issues and better navigate the moral challenges of everyday life. I'm Jonas Goldson. I'd like to welcome my guests. Today I have Cordelia Gaffar, who is the world's best joymonger, author of multiple books, host of the Free to Be show, and co host of the Unlearning Labels podcast. We have Diane Helbig, who's the chief improvement catalyzer at Helbig Enterprises, providing guidance and training to business owners and leaders around the world. And we have April Schrentz, who's a business accelerator, creator of the generosity culture, author of Magic Blue Rocks, and host of the Pour Into Your Business podcast. Thank you, ladies, for being with me today. And I specifically chose today's scenario for a time when I would have three female guests. So I'm very interested to see how this conversation goes. So here is the scenario. You're walking down the hallway of a corporate office building. The elevator door opens in front of you and out of the elevator steps your next door neighbor. Nice young lady with whom you're very friendly. What are you doing here, you ask? She replies, I'm so excited. I have a great job opportunity. I'm interviewing with a corporate law firm in this office, right here, right now, how do I look? You look her over and you think, OMG, no one should walk into the bathroom in the morning looking like that. Did she look in the mirror before she left home? How do you respond to her question? The floor is open. <laughs> You know, I would, I would ask her, like, how do you feel you look? And, and then I would say, you know, depending on her response, I'd say, um, well, you know, it really matters how you feel. What position are you applying for? You know, um, and all those things matter. I would it would really depend on my relationship with her and the answers to those questions as to how honest I would be with her um, because there's not much you can do on the spot, right? To change <laughs> what you're wearing. It's like, there it is. Um, I would definitely encourage her to, to be her most authentic, and best self because it's really not what we look like on the outside it's who we present that we are um, there are a lot of stories about um, people not being well dressed men or women and still getting jobs mm -hmm. and because of how they present who they are with their speech with their demeanor and and um, i would really encourage her in that way you said a couple of interesting things, Cordelia. One, one is that the answer to the question today might be different from what it would have been 10 or 20 or 30 years ago. And there's also a difference between if you would have caught her walking out the front door when she could still go back in and, and do something mm -hmm. and catching her as she's walking into the interview where there's really nothing she could do. Right. And you, and you don't want to put her in a position where she's about to walk into an interview and she's overly self-conscious because you've just even politely told her maybe not the best look. I think I might ask her um, what look she was going for because it might not be a look I would go for, but if she's a young lady and I'm not a young lady, there's just a difference there. And whatever look she's going through, she may be, she may have it. So for me, I wouldn't walk out of the bathroom looking like that, but if she's rocking it and she's feeling good about it. So I, I, I like Cordelia saying, you know, how do you feel? Because she may think she's right and great. Then, then she'll be presenting her best self. Yeah. April, we actually had this, point. we actually had this conversation uh, on a different interview. Mm -hmm. about, uh, Animal choice. Yeah. <laughs> so go ahead. So 
I would actually have a couple questions, Yonasen, and I don't know if we're allowed to ask, but I'm going to just ask forgiveness instead of permission. So one is, is this my office building? Do I have something I could give her if it would help her? And my other question is, does she normally dress this way? So can I tell by the fact that I interact with her quite a bit that she's either, you know, gotten in a car accident, gotten, you know, washed over with mud from a bus, or is this a normal thing? Because basically, if I thought I could help her in a way that would not undermine her confidence, I would 100% say something along the lines of, you know, I've been to that law firm or I'm aware of that law firm. They're exceedingly conservative. I think they are going to love you just the way you are, but they're going to have to know you a little more first. Here's this blazer, something like that. Like, I think that'll get you in the door so you can wow them. Now, if none of that was an option, I would simply tell her to go and just be herself. Because just like the, the other ladies pointed out, once you're at the place where you can't do something, the worst thing you can do is harm somebody's mindset by telling them, hey, you don't have a shot because you have no idea. And the only other thing I might do is give her the heads up that they would appreciate knowing that she's willing to conform to whatever dress code they have. She came from a place where this was appropriate. What she's wearing may not align with the way that they take care of their dress code, but that's something that she's open to. And if she can do that in just a very outgoing and confident way, I think that that will go a long way towards making them feel good about her as a hire if they think she's such a bad fit because she has a mohawk or what have you. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things I was wondering, you know, when you talk about asking questions is, you know, what is it about the way that she looks? Like, could I say after asking her what look she was going for, whatever, you know, let's jump into the bathroom real quick. Would you mind if I played with your hair? or, you know, asking permission, but just, you know, whatever it is to maybe help her. It just depends on, you know, what, what really is that look? And is that the right place for her to be working? And that's why right? I set it up as a corporate law firm as opposed to a software company. Yeah, because yeah. it's a big difference, right? Yeah. Well, and you know what, though, she could be working at a corporate law firm, Yonison, but she could be going for the job as an investigator. And the way right. she's dressed could be 100% mm. on point, And we just stuck our foot in it. <laughs> See that that's exactly what I was thinking, April, because I worked in DC law firms, and it really depends on the position you had, mm -hmm. right? So like, if you're in the mailroom, no one cares, you know, and mm -hmm. you're right, if you're an investigator, if you're, you know, like a, a a paralegal or um, you know some kind of clerk, it's really not that big of a deal. And I, I I have seen people come in to interviews looking all kinds of way and still getting the job, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and maybe maybe you know it's an intern. Interns, it didn't really matter either. So, yeah. I think the most. Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead, April. I just I think the most important thing when you're looking at, at this situation is to understand that we're looking at it through a certain lens with the information that we have. And an example I think of is a good friend of mine who told me, you know, I just keep seeing these these young people with their pants too short. And I want to tell them, you know, your suit is too short. You need to go have it tailored. And I said, yeah, you pro probably don't do that to strangers. I don't think it's a good idea. And then what I noticed was that's a trend that is on point ah. fashion and absolutely correct. My friend is just older than the folks that are doing that trend. So I think that having an awareness that because it doesn't work for you or doesn't seem like it's a great idea for you doesn't mean it's going to be wrong for that other person is important. Yeah, I mean, I one of my I mean, it's still, I can't get used to it. The young men wear, wear ties with their shirt tails out. <laughs> yeah. That's nuts. what I haven't seen. I like that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, once it becomes part of the culture, you really can't argue it's inappropriate anymore. And do you, does it matter um, who we are? You know, it's us. So I, I, I went there from who I am and mm -hmm. how I deal with, you know, my neighbor's kids and, and that sort of thing. Um, but then I started thinking, okay, but if I was closer to this person's age, 
I, I might think the way they're dressed is totally appropriate. You know, it might not strike me like sometimes we see things and just go, you know, wow, that's that's really <laughs> interesting. You know, well, the first time I pr presented this scenario to a group of college kids, the moment I, I finished saying it, I realized I need to explain now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a slide to go with it, a really, you know, <laughs> um, powerful slide of somebody who really was not dressed for a corporate office. But I realized, you know, I'm talking to a group of young people who have never probably never been inside a corporate office. Right. Yeah. That's and, right. But what you're you're all sort of talking around is the idea we want to help. Mm -hmm. We want to acknowledge the possibility that she really doesn't know what she's walking into. And at the same time, we want to respect her because maybe she does know where she's walking in and maybe she is completely appropriate. And, and we don't necessarily have the, all, all the information. So the, the diplomacy, I like to say that, that etiquette is the art of social ethics, that we want to be diplomatic, but on the other hand, we don't want to just say, well, it's not really my business and let her walk into a situation where maybe we could have helped her anticipate right. a potential problem yep yeah there's too much we don't know I, I i feel like you know maybe if we ask you know what position are you interviewing for how did you how'd you come about the interview it would lend so much more information to what she's doing there and mm -hmm. and you know how she even got to be there i just don't think we know enough information well, and coming at it from a place of, as both of you have said, curiosity mm -hmm. instead of judgment. The scenario itself is a place of judgment, right? Oh my goodness, <laughs> she looks terrible. But if we step back and instead say, I wonder why she looks like that, mm -hmm. there must be a good reason. Because if this is someone you're friendly with, we're always going to give them the benefit of the doubt, right? Yeah. So it, it changes the lens in which we seek to help. And I think people are more open to your help when you come at it from a place of curiosity instead of a place of you're wrong. Yeah. And I mean, another thing that we don't know is perhaps it's like a, a friend's parent that invited her for the opportunity. So it doesn't, again, matter what mm -hmm. she's dressed like, you know? So. Right. And if we know her, she's our neighbor. I keep having this picture of my neighbor in my head. And this girl who's beautiful has the nose ring and the thing and the thing and the, you know, whatever. And she's just, and you know, the mom in me wants to say, but she's expressing who she is. This is just her way of expressing how she motors through the world and, and deals with the universe. And so if I walked, if I saw her walk in like that, I wouldn't think twice about it because that's who she is. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's part of it too right? If it's out of character for how we know them, mm -hmm. then that might lead to other questions too. But chances are good, it's probably in character with who they are. Well, what about that, that idea we mentioned of, of authenticity? Um, if I'm interested in taking a, a job in a place where my authentic self might not fit the culture do I stand firm in being my authentic self or do I modify my self presentation with as the, it was part of the recognition that I'm going into an environment that somebody else wants to define in a certain way. And therefore it's incumbent upon me to adapt to that situation. How old are you, Yonason? <laughs> 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 and I ask this because when I was a teenager, I joined the service. So I signed up to <laughs> modify the way that I looked to what they wanted us to conform to because I wanted that experience and I wanted that opportunity. So I think it depends on the situation. And to a great extent, I do think it depends on your age because I think you're more willing when you're younger to conform than you may be when you're older because the experience or getting that income or any of those things may be more pressing at that age than it would be when you're older. I remember re Go ahead, Anne. Well, so you knew with the service what you had to do. 
Right? Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. And you made a conscious choice that, that you were going to do that. And I'm not so sure that that really played with your authentic self because that was your authentic self. Your yeah. authentic self wanted to go through that experience and yeah. come out the other side. Uh, uh, do you think? No? I wanted, I wanted the, the role that I was going to have in the military as a television broadcaster, and I mm. wanted to get an education. And if I had to forgive me, my brethren, veterans, <laughs> dress like a tree to make it happen, I was willing to do it. Ah. <laughs> Okay. You were in the army. <laughs> okay. And that is literally how I looked at it because we were in the old camo days where it really did look very much like the forest. And I was like, I will dress like a tree to do the other things that I want to do. And it, it did require, I mean, there, there's a, a lot of rules around your appearance, which they make sense. They, I understood them, but what people look like on the weekend versus what they look like in uniform was totally different. But to me, that requirement was worth all of the benefits of getting to join the service. So interesting. Yeah. So I so, think so. as long as the goal is enough, I just think young people these days, I mean, I see so many people working, sacrificing their authenticity, sacrificing who they are to be in a job for money that they're not enjoying. So they're not even necessarily living up to their potential because that you know their reason for being there isn't enough to to really you know I think it's a question we always need to be asking ourselves is is the reward you know is the payoff of value and I really like the, the way you're framing your story April that you know you're making a you're making that evaluation that Diane just described and on the one hand you are compromising yourself but on the other hand. You have a goal that you want to achieve. And this is part of how you are going to reach that goal. So there may have been, I mean, you tell us, was there an inner conflict going on? Or was it just so clear you wanted to reach the goal that it really wasn't an issue? There were times that I was like, gosh, I can't wait until I, I don't have to do this anymore. I will never wear camo again for the rest of my life. Interestingly, once I got out of the service, I missed it. I missed how easy it was to get ready, that there was no thought in it, that you just, everyone did the same thing. And I now wear camo quite a bit just because I have such fond memories of my time in service. So, and I'm older. I think, I do think that that individuality feels more squashed sometimes when you're still figuring out who you are and your clothing and the way you dress and, and those sorts of things is part of how you express it. If I had to do it now, I don't think it would mean near as much to me one way or the other. So interesting. I still think you were your authentic self. You made a decision based on who you were for what you wanted to achieve. And it was okay to, for a period of time, mm -hmm look like a tree because it was getting I just love that because it was getting you to a greater goal but that really was your authentic self saying this is what I want and this is what I'm willing to to do to get it I, I definitely see your point I 100% see where you're coming from well, let's let's steer back to the, the topic of um, addressing other people's um, appearance uh, my wife was in synagogue one, one Sabbath morning, and right in front of her was a lady who had a slit up the back of her skirt, almost all the way to the waistline. And it was, in a, it was in a synagogue that was sort of a mixed group. Some were more religious, some were less religious. The more religious would never wear something like that. And my wife thought, gosh, I thought this woman was more religious, but um, I don't really know her that well. And, and she didn't say anything. Years later, when we got to be very good friends with this couple, and the woman's telling my wife, you know, I had this horrible slit story once. I got home from synagogue and I discovered that my, my skirt was slit all the way up. And my wife said, oh my gosh, I was right behind you. <laughs> Why didn't you say something? <laughs> I didn't know you that well. See, now something like that, I totally would have said something. I would have been like, you know what? You may not be aware, 
but I have a, a sewing kit in my purse. Let's go to the ladies room real quick. I totally would. I'm just one of those people. And I would do that with like, like if there's like a piece of green in your mouth, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to say it. I'm going to, you know what? You might want to take a swig of water, you know, mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would totally, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Now, conversely, and I completely agree with you. I would too. I, and I, I think that it's almost our duty because I would hope that someone would do that for me. But conversely, yeah. <laughs> if she came back to me and said, oh, no, no, this is how I like it. I'd be like, well, you do you. All right. Like they're, they're, to me, how someone else chooses to dress is none of my business. Yeah. And if they're not hurting anyone, I'm good. Yeah. But you're right. If you think that it's a wardrobe malfunction, as we talked about yeah, earlier. Right? 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 <laughs> <I'm out. laughs> You know, I was standing in line in, in uh, Panera one morning and this woman walked up to me and said, excuse me, one second, your label is out, like on the back of my shirt, the label was flipped out. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, your labels flipped it back in. And, and I and her she was with her son. And I was like, wow, who would do that? Like, that's so nice. I never would have noticed Very it's behind fine. me. Right. Never would have seen it. And I don't know whether I would have cared a whole lot with where I was going, but it was so nice of her to do. So I bought her at, just, you know, grab some cookies and gave them to her and her son because I wanted him to see that's really nice to do something for a stranger. Right. She and I ended up being business friends later on. It was so weird. It was just this. We ran into each other and another thing. And oh, you were the person. Oh, you did. You know, Aww. and and yeah. So you never know. Yeah, you said it perfectly, April. That, that we would want others to do it for us. You know, mm -hmm. if my if my collars turned up and I let me I take a look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Only tell me good things. Uh, but you know, I don't want to be walking around with you know this out or that out or this undone or that undone. And then and, and then later I find out that I was walking around in public like that, and I'm mortified. Even worse if I'm on camera. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And now it's that's the one that's going to go viral, right? Of course. Um, so we, but of course, it's interesting what none of you said is tell her you look terrific. Oh no! Yeah, that's I would be honest. <laughs> She's my friend. She's going to come home and either get the job or not, and we're still going to know each other. Why would you lie? Yeah. Right. Well, well, I think some people, again, to avoid that feel of immediate embarrassment. Mm -hmm. Well, just be nice. Yeah. And yeah. there's nothing I can do about it anyway. I also like what you said. If you were in the office and you have something, you know, that's really thinking outside the box. Yeah, I think that's how great. can I uh, to help the situation? Yeah. But so only if I could put it on the firm in a way that I, what I would not want to do is mess with anyone's confidence going yeah. into an interview. Right. I'd actually rather her go in looking a hot mess confident. Then yeah, going looking too. better, feeling insecure. Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. That that sense of confidence is going to project out, no matter what we're wearing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's not nice to tell someone they look great when they don't. Yeah, you know, we think that's a nice thing to do. It really isn't a nice thing to do. Yeah, because that it's really turned out to be the problem. Then the next time she goes for an interview, she'll wear the same thing and she'll yeah. be setting yourself up for failure again and again. Right. Being out of integrity is never nice. No. <laughs> you know, it's like, right. Yeah. yeah so it's another place where, where etiquette and ethics lives is that that space between brutal honesty and, uh, and outright untruth. I don't think we need the brutal. I don't think there's any need for that part. Just honesty. And I love the way you guys have framed the, you know, how you would have that conversation with her so that it wasn't a focus on her, right? And 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 asking the questions and things so that we can be honest in a in a kind, more gentle sort of way. It, or, or I guess it's not really what I'm thinking is in a constructive way, mm -hmm. you know, in a way that will actually serve them. In, in all ways, it's not going to cut down their confidence. It's not going to put them in a, in a dangerous situation or a bad situation. It's going to be a learning experience for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, before I ask each of you to sum up there, there is actually a biblical um, 
approach to this, uh, the verse says to, you will surely rebuke your neighbor, but don't bear a sin on his behalf. So but rebuke means to correct, to instruct, mm -hmm. to point out where someone may have gone wrong, but to do it in a way that doesn't cause embarrassment, that doesn't cause a lack of confidence, um, that, that doesn't diminish the person in any way, which means it has to be coming from a place of love and concern. The timing has to be right. The phrasing has to be right. And what I find fascinating is that the Hebrew word for rebuke shares its root with a, the word for validation. Because when I correct you, you know, we use a constructive criticism. When I, cons when I constructively correct you, what I'm really saying is I have confidence in your ability to do better. And so I'm validating you rather than demeaning you. And if I can give correction or counsel or advice in that spirit, it's much more likely it's going to be well-received and ultimately beneficial. So uh, if I could ask each of you to uh, give your final summation, uh, I'm going to go around the order of my screen. Cordelia? Um. In this case, I would say it's always better to err on the on the side of elevating someone's character and um, I would say elevating their soul so that they're going into a place feeling like this is an op this is truly a learning opportunity, whether I get the position or not. At least I know more than I did when I walked in. Diane? I think I would say um, that it's important that we don't judge based on what works for us and to be curious. I mean, curiosity is my favorite thing and to, to really find out as much as we can because that will help us have the conversation in an uplifting, positive, forward-moving sort of way. Thank you. April, you have the last word. Absolutely agree with what Diane said with approaching it with curiosity instead of judgment and to come at someone offering advice and only if they then say they'd like to have it, then from a, a place of, of caring, share with them candidly how you can help, always though in service to their success. Yeah, and sometimes just to introduce it with a phrase like, may I offer a suggestion? I mean, in this case, she asked, which makes it easier. How did I look? Um, I feel like that's not a real question. That's like how well <laughs> they may or may not actually want to know. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, sort of like, how are you? I was just going to say that. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just like. How I mean, are ask you? any husband: Is there more than one right answer to how do I look uh, from your wife? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Great, darling, right? <laughs> right. Fantastic. <laughs> well, maybe we'll take that up in the next second segment. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, ladies. This has been delightful. Um, I'd like to again thank my guests, April Schrins, Diane Helvig, Cordelia Gafar. Uh, really appreciate you joining me and uh, I do hope that you will come and be part of this panel again. Um, Absolutely, thank you. Ladies, pleasure to meet you. You too. For those of you in the audience, if you'd like to suggest an ethical scenario or dilemma for discussion, please go to my website, yonasongoldson.com. Use the contact box and submit your proposal. If uh, we think it's an engaging topic, we may take it up. If you are a Grappling with Gray member, please use the community link to participate in a follow-up Q&A and continue discussion. If you're not a member, please go to gwtg.live. That's gwtg.live where you can apply for a free 30-day membership and get all member benefits. Please join us again next week for another ethical discussion as our panel grapples with the gray.